welcome to Campfire. We're so excited to have you here with us. Um, my name is Pacific, and just to tell you a little bit about myself, I picked the beach for name Pacific because I love the ocean. I love being at the beach. I love feeling the sand in my toes. I love smelling the fresh ocean air, but most of all, I love being in the ocean. Even in the cold Pacific Ocean waters, I could spend 20 or 30 minutes just hanging out in the waves. Um, some other things I like are sour candy, all kinds, all things sour, but I could eat Sour Patch Kids basically forever. For every meal, Poppy likes to eat ice cream every day. I could eat something sour every single day. That was Pacific. I'm Solo. Maybe you could too. X-O-L-O, -O, but it's pronounced like C-H-O-L-O, -O, um, because the whole name is Sholo Squintle, and it's this type of dog from Latin America. And if you've ever seen the movie Coco, Miguel's dog, Dante, that's Sholo Squintle. That's the kind of dog that it is. Yeah, like German Shepherds, there's Chihuahua. Golden Retrievers, Chihuahuas, but this one is Sholo Squintle, and that's what it chose, because I just, I wish I could just pet dogs every day, and I want to be a Sholo Squintle. And a little bit about me, I, my favorite food, is pancakes. I love eating pancakes. I eat them for breakfast, lunch, and I wish I could eat them for dinner. I mean, I would eat them for, I'll do them for tonight, just for you. But <laughs> I love pancakes, and I wish I could travel the world and try pancakes from every country and see how they taste. If you ever had a pancake in a different country, please let me know. I would be so grateful. And that seems a nice theme, which is gratefulness. So we're gonna be grateful all night long and all week long too. And that goes into, we're gonna sing you a song called Go Into the Night. And for this, we brought, sorry. For this, we brought uh, a special guest. Let, let me go get them real quick. <gasps> Who's oh it gonna God! be? So, um, this song is called Go Into the Night, and while we're at campfire, something that we're doing, we're going to think about this whole night, and this song, the way it works is, the same words kind of repeat themselves, and, uh, <coughs> and then there's different animal sounds that you might hear in the night, and when those animals, when we talk about those animals, you're going to make that sound, so when we talk about the owl, what sound are you going to make? <laughs> and you can make that sound along with us at home. Um, we'll be singing and along with the all-star famous <gasps> guitarist, Ace Greenland! Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited! I'm really excited that Chloe's hot. not here to see Ace Greenland, but, you know, <laughs> some things, so, you know, hopefully she'll be back in yeah, time. Yeah, hopefully she'll be when I can so, finish. Yeah. yeah, by the time you're done, hopefully we see it, Cholo back here so that she can meet you. I know she's your biggest fan. Uh, I am Cholo's biggest fan too. That Cholo. So, um, we're gonna sing this song up here, and you guys can make the animal sounds at home. And we want to get you thinking about going out into the night, um, which is something that we're gonna be focusing on this whole campfire. Yeah. All right. And let me get my song though. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite light. Just gotta check out. Make sure yeah. she's getting it perfect just for you. She perfect. wants to make sure you have the perfect Every experience. <laughs> just for you. Okay. Ready. One, two, three. When you go into the night, there's music in the night. Call it out a song that's clear. And nighttime hell is a great horn now with the song that you can hear. And it Oh, no, 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 no. 
of a lone coyote is a song that you can hear. And the coyote you can hear. Oh! Outside my tent, I think it was a raccoon-sized bear. <laughs> have you considered that it might have been a raccoon? Did have like that tail that like you know like oh had God. different colors on it, but it was yeah. definitely a raccoon-sized bear. Whoa. I'm sure of it. <laughs> oh. Or maybe a bear-sized raccoon. Hmm? Have you considered that? Not. Oh. I might have to go back to the drawing boards on that one. <laughs> well, um, so now that we've been thinking about some of the things that are out at night, we're going to play a game of charades of the animals of the night. Um, and so we're going to use... Oh, Is that a moment, ladies? Sassy boots, actually. We've got a question from Angela. Yeah. And they're noticing even through our tiny screen. 
speaker, they're noticing the sound of some birds. <gasps> oh, you can hear them? Oh my god. And they're wondering what kind of birds we're listening to. Do any of the naturalists have an answer to that? I think it might. Yeah, come, why don't you come on up? Because we want to give the best answer we can. I might be wrong, because so, I have a track history of not being right sometimes, but I think that was an American <laughs> robin. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so the way this charades game works is that you can let us know in the comments some of those animals we've been talking about, and one of us will tell just one naturalist what that animal is, and they're going to act it out in charades, and then all the rest of the naturalists are going to try to guess what that animal is. And so, if you remember that song that we just sang, Go Into the Night, we were saying like, You'll hear owls or songs like coyotes or frogs. Like those might be some animals you never know. Comment down below <laughs> what are some other animals that come out. We night. have some. We have we some have. student suggestions. Okay, so who? Which naturalist wants to be the first actor? In Shanty. The that's so yeah. yeah. And then maybe Ooh. Outdoor Ed could do one. This one's gonna be pretty easy, I think. Kiwi. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it's charades, I just act out. That's the way it works. You can't speak though. Penguin. <laughs> Bird. Hawk. Bat. Owl. 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 Boom. Yes. 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 <laughs> Sleepy time bird. <laughs> Can you give us a skull? Give us a challenge. Thank you so thing. much. We have, are, I think we can have Adora, do you want to give it a try? Yeah, I'll give it a try. Hey, common lady. Hey. Oh. Thank you, Sequoia, for that recommendation of the owl. That was a good one. Okay. <gasps> I'm going to give you this one. Like, you're going to be really good at that. Oh, no. <laughs> common lady's tricky. Oh, my God. I think I was thinking of this. Oh. A raccoon sized bear. <laughs> raccoon? Uh, rat. A rat. Squirrel? Rat. Oh, that was, yeah, that was the one for the video. Thank you, Karsten, for that suggestion. Rats are indeed nocturnal animals. Yeah, puppy. Puppy. I think we have time for puppy. Puppy. Puppy is an incredible actress, so let's see. Give me a good one. Okay, I'm going to give you this one. I think you've got it. <laughs> Copy's looking really ready. Okay. Rabbit. Squirrel. Deer. A raccoon sized bear. <laughs> Pikachu. <Love that>. <laughs> raccoon. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is too big. A raccoon. Raccoon. Yeah. 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 A raccoon. Yeah. So, more, more. We have time. We have, I think we have time for at least one more. Oh, yeah, Hazel! Hazel. 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 Get up there, Lemon. Thank you, Kaylee, for that raccoon. That one was tricky. Poppy, you killed it. Okay, what do you think? Okay. Are you able to do it? Yeah. Remember, no sounds. Raccoon sized bear. <laughs> Ooh, get it out. Uh, coyote. Uh, coyote. Oh. Wow. Wow. Great job. <laughs> Naturalist Chanterelle made these really cool. And trout. And trout. Um, <laughs> made these really cool constellations. Um, what did we call them? Constellation tubes. Star, star tubes. Star, star tubes. Star and star tubes. They star have scope. the star, star scope. scopes. Star they have the uh, the shapes of the constellations. So this one was. We can put it oh, this way. way. <laughs> and then you can see. Oh nice. yeah, there you go. What those constellations look like. Um, if anyone knows the name of this constellation, um, 
these two constellations that are in this star tube, let us know in the comments. These are ones you might have seen. You might have seen one or both of them in the night sky. Even if you live in really brightly lit places, you can see these stars um, pretty frequently. Um, do you want to, let's turn it, we'll give them a full, because sometimes the stars are in different shape, different places in the sky because they move. Um, but they might be in different in different places, you might see them in different directions, but these are stars that we see in the sky a lot here in California. Do we have any guesses? Not yet. That's okay. Oh, Aspen thinks it might be the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. That's yeah. correct, Aspen. The Dippers. Right. So, these constellations, um, we see them in the sky a lot, and they're very recognizable, the big and the little dipper looking like ladles. Um, and we have another constellation. You might have seen this guy in the sky as well. Ooh, nearly fell. That's cool. If anyone recognizes this constellation, you can let us know in the comments. Nicole also qualified called the other one Ursa Major. Ooh. Yeah. So oh, oh, that's is. really awesome. Thank you, Nicole, for that comment. Um, because the thing with constellations is that they are stories that people have made up about the stars. And lots of people have created different stories and found different pictures. And the Big Dipper, I believe, is part of a constellation called Ursa Major, part, a part of a bigger constellation of a bear that's in the sky. So this constellation, if you haven't already guessed, is Orion. You can see on the outside what Orion looks like. And so you might recognize this line in the middle as Orion's belt. Nice are... job, Angela and Aspen. They both guessed it right. Oh my God, amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Angela and Aspen. Um, and you can see this constellation in the sky. Um, those three stars in the middle that are straight in a line often make a really cool, there's a really cool thing to see and they're really bright and those are stars we can also see in California. Cool. And just like Pacific said, our stars have come about with different stories that different people have told throughout time. And I have a story of the battle between the sun and the moon oh. and it's an Aztec story. And we're going to have um, some uh, actors that are going to come have over, they're very three. professional actors going to come over and act out our story. Chola, before you yeah. start, we have a really important question from Solar Steve. Okay. He would like to know how you say star in Espanol. Star in Spanish is estrella. Can you guys, can you guys say it? Estrella. 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 Yeah. Las estrellas. Perfect. Yep. And this actually is a story from Aztecs that were in Mexico and they speak Spanish there too. So 23 different countries in the world speak Spanish. That's so cool. So. This story is called The Battle Between the Moon and the Sun. And as I, as I say the story, our actors are going to come by and they're going to act it out, okay? So, <laughs> Aztec mythology has many stories and variations as to how the moon and the star and the suns were created. This is one of those variations. In Aztec mythology, there's a god named Cuatlicue, who's the mother of all gods. She gave birth and created to 400 different gods. Whoa, that's a lot of gods. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot of gods in there. Each god has a specific role and importance. For example, there's gods of wind, like Etergatl, and gods of fire and flowers. And one god in particular, who is the most powerful god of all of them, her name is Goyo Shauki, and she's the most powerful goddess. <laughs> She was the most strongest, she was the strongest god out of 400 of those gods. And she loved and respected her mother so much, more than any of the gods. But one day, Kuatlikwe was sweeping the floors of a temple for the gods. And a ball of feathers floated down from the sky directly onto her. <laughs> and... They were the most beautiful turquoise colored feathers that she had ever seen. And she thought that they were so special she was going to store them in her pockets near her heart. And later on when she went back 
to check her pockets and reach in to see at, look at those feathers because they were so beautiful, she realized they were no longer there. But she also realized that she was now going to create a new god. She was going to create a new god. Yep. She was going to birth a new god. And... <laughs> But when Koyo Shauki, the most powerful god of all of them, since she loved and respected her mother so much, she was super jealous. And she decided, she's like, how could she do this to me? So, she decided to get all 400 gods to help her out and kill the new god that was going to be created. <laughs> gods was not on Koyoshauki's side. He was actually going to tell, he ran and tell whoever was in there. He ran and tell Kwatlikwe uh, the plan of that they were going to kill her child. It wasn't the plan. <laughs> They're going to kill so, her child. And her child could actually talk to her. And so she, child. The, the child told her, he's like, I know what we're going to do to win. I know what we're going to do to win. <laughs> what are we going to do to win? When all the 400 gods came back to um, kill uh, the, the child, um, since the child knew that he was going to have to prepare for war, Kwatlikwe gave birth to the child that she now called uh, Itzilopochli. He called him Itzilopochli. And he was born, not a baby, but an entire adult because he was ready for battle. That's an entire adult! <laughs> And his his armor was covered with beautiful <laughs> eagle and hummingbird feathers because he was known as a cool. hummingbird god. And his body was blue because he was a hummingbird god. He was ready for war. And he knew that he was going to have to face 400 gods by himself. So he summoned the most powerful, the most powerful weapon in Aztec history, the turquoise serpent. Bro, you're a <laughs> he had to go oh get God. the turquoise serpent. I'm really scared. This, this is so intimidating. Ah! <laughs> oh! He has his turquoise serpent. And with this turquoise serpent, he killed all 400 gods except for one. The most yes. powerful of all goddess, yes. the goddess Goyo Shauki, came back. She's like, I'm going to fight <laughs> off Itzino Pochli. So, since they were so powerful, their fight lasted for over days. <gasps> Day, night, day, night. Days later. <laughs> but in the end, only one god came out victorious. And that Bossy. was Ifilo Pochli! No. Whoa! And he killed Goyo Shoki by cutting her throat and throwing her head in the sky and it became the moon. Whoa. <laughs> became stars after they were killed by Isidro Bochli and um, her, his brother Quetzalcoatl came by and he was like, well, you're so powerful. Only the most powerful god in the world could become this most important job and that was to become the sun. So he's like, can you become the sun? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> and so he decided to take the job and so he became the sun and every night since um, Ishiro Pochli went up to the sky. Oh. Koyoshaki is still there and she's the moon and she still doesn't like Ishiro Pochli. So she and all the stars at night battle with Ishiro Pochli to see who will win. And when the, the moon and the stars come up, they're winning a little, they're winning. But then the sun fights back every day and comes back up and beats Koyoshaki and the stars. And the stars are called Titsunime. And so maybe tonight you can go outside and see if you see any Titsunime in the sky. Thank you! Woo! To all our actors, that was amazing! Woo! So warm fuzzies to all of our actors. If you know any stories of any of the other constellations, um, constellations that we've showed you, like the Big and Little Dipper or um, Orion, or any other constellations, you can let us know in the comments. We would love to hear your stories about constellations. Because the great thing about Constellation 
is that there are stories from all different cultures around the world. There are even, you can even go outside tonight, tomorrow night, or any other night and make up a constellation in the sky. You can look for those pictures of stars um, and see anything that you see and you can make a story about it, um, which is a really cool thing about the night sky. Yeah. And I forgot to tell you guys that on night hikes, sometimes I would bring a hand warmer because my hands would get so cold. <laughs> so if you ever get cold, just look at some hand warmers. <laughs> and that also brings me back to another thing that I would bring with me to our night hikes, which was, I'm going to get this up. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Skittles. And you would bring the animals out on night hikes? I would never. feel like that. You shouldn't feed the animals on What I do do. <laughs> what I do do is do I do get do. Skittles, and because they're eyes, they have these things called rods and cones, and cones let us see colors, and rods let us see in the night. Um, the more you're out in the night, the more your eyes get used to the darkness, and you can see better. So I'd get Skittles and put them on people's hands and see if they can guess the color. And for this, I can get a naturalist to come on up and see if they can guess the color. <gasps> oh, we have a comment from the comment. Oh, we got <gasps> new comment. Who is that? Who is that? Is that Solar Steve? Who is that? Comments. <laughs> there, a comment from a student named Kaylee. Uh, she remembered a, a star story you asked for in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. She thinks she remembers one about Orion falling <laughs> in love with Artemis. <gasps> oh. Whoa. Thank you, Kaylee. Oh. Thank you so much. I'm gonna read that. See if I can find it. It sounds cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of love happening up in the stars, awesome. from what I hear. <gasps> Lumen. Are, are you gonna try our our? See if you can guess the color of our Skittles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. What we're gonna do is. So I close my eyes. Yeah. Or what? Actually, you can cup your hands, and you can do this at home too. If you have Skittles, you can do this too. M and M's. Or M and M's. Yeah. You're gonna or cup fruits your and hands. vegetables. <laughs> You're gonna you close them up. You can open your eyes. Oh. You can cup your hands like that and see if. Until it gets super dark and you can't really see anything inside, you can kind of squeeze them through like this. Got some dark hands. Let's jump up. Lean in there. <laughs> Send Kaylee in there. No light in there. Well, that's pretty dark. Yeah, darkness. That's total pretty, darkness. Pretty dark. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drop a skittle in there. I'm I already it have it here, and I'm gonna drop it in there. We're gonna try to guess the color by looking of the skittle, <laughs> and you're gonna look inside and. Even though it's going to be in darkness, you're going to try to see if you can guess the color of the Skittle. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> try use the, all of the forces of your brain power. If you saw what color I put in there, see if, if she gets it right. Orange? Let's open it up oh, and see if you're close. right. No! Oh, what color is it, Lily? You can try the camp, try the student. Yeah, no. Yellow. Oh, my God. Shoot. Maybe we should, you want to try it again? Yeah. The worst okay. flavor of Skittle. Anyway, <laughs> I love the lemon Okay, you ready? I'm gonna have to bite you on this. Okay, lemon flavor. I think my eyes are getting more adjusted to the darkness now that my lids are closed for a moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can close your eyes and then it'll get used to the darkness and then you can see. Ooh, I know what this one is. It's red. thing where if you've ever been up at night late and um and your room has been dark for a while you know it gets kind of easier to see where everything is like at first when you turn off the lights it looks like pitch black but after you've been in the dark for a while you start to recognize where your bed is and where maybe you have drawers or shelves or something else in your room or maybe you like left something in the middle of your floor and you're trying not to trip over it um your eyes adjust and this doesn't only this doesn't only work outside but it works inside your house even in your own bedroom you can test it out tonight by leaving the lights, off, turning off all the lights, and watching and seeing as you can start to see more things. Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, those are some good skittles. So we got, we've done our our night hike, right? Kind of we're going with our our headlamps. We've talked about some animals that we've seen, some stars. Told a whole story about it. Well, whole story. Uh, talked about some skittles, rods and cones, trying to get used to the night. And now, one of the coolest activities that we do on night hikes. It's called Courage Candle. And so we go in, uh, this is, it can be at the beginning, in the middle, in the end, mostly in the beginning and the middle. But uh, we get a candle, and when that candle gets to you, you talk about something that you've been grateful for or courageous of. And for today, all our naturalists are going to have their candles, and you can do this at home too. We're going to talk about 
what we are grateful for, who we are grateful for too, and um, you can join us as well. So we're gonna go get our candies and light them up. Light them up. So this is a courage candle, and there's something really special about a courage candle. I already lit mine. Um, um, you might be able to see um, there are squares on the outside. But first, before we even talk about courage, um, while well, I'm talking about this courage candle, is do any of you know what the word courage means? Um, and if you do, you can please let us know in the comments um, because it's basically it's super important to this whole I concept of a courage circle um, and talking about people that make us courageous or that we're grateful for is to know what the word courage means. Um, so I want you to think about that and really understand it because it's going to make this activity so much cooler and more meaningful. Um, so does anybody know what the word courage means? <laughs> yeah. So. Bravery. Bravery. Ooh, bravery. Yeah. That's a really great definition. So. Courage means Aspen. doing the right thing when no one else will. Yes. As in that is a Rathian definition of the That's word amazing. courage. Bravery is also a really good definition. Um, the way that I like to think of courage um, is it doesn't necessarily mean um, like you do something when you do something that's hard and you're brave. It's that you know it doesn't you don't have to overcome your fear in order to have courage. But when you have those butterflies in your stomach, when something is challenging and you do it anyways, that's what it means to have courage. So you can all think about times that you've had butterflies in your stomach. I know I've had butterflies. Mm -hmm. I bet all of these naturalists have had butterflies. That's part of what it means to be human. Um, and that's what it means to have courage. Um, and as I was saying before, the cool thing about these courage candles is that you can see the squares in them. Um, so there is a teacher who's been coming to Outdoor Ed for a long time with one of the other schools. Um, and he makes these courage candles for us. And what he does is when a candle is burned out and you can't use it anymore, there's still some of the outside left. And those candles get melted down and put back into a new courage, get cut up into squares, and those squares get poured into our new courage candles. So all of the naturalists have courage candles that have a lot of courage, not just from this year and not just from the stories that we're going to share today, but stories that have been shared for years and years. So many students sharing their courage together. Um, so I want everyone to think about someone in their life that makes them feel courageous, someone who makes them feel brave, someone who makes them feel like they can do those things that are hard when they have butterflies. And I want you to let us know in the comments so that we can share all that courage because sometimes it's kind of scary to walk in the dark at night or to be in the night um, with all those animals that you might not be able to see, that you might just be listening to. Um, so I want, or there's, you know, in this time and place in the world, there's a lot of reasons for things to be kind of scary, but there's always people in our lives that give us courage. So while you're sharing in the comments, um, we're also gonna have some of the naturalists come up and share some people that make them feel courageous. Um, but it looks like we already are starting some to have some comments. There you are. Yeah, okay. Comment, lady. Kaylee shared a time she had butterflies during a talent show mm -hmm. at school and said her friend gives her courage. And Aspen said that uh, their grandparents give them courage, too. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. That's amazing. Thanks, comment, lady. Those are really special and important people to have in your life. Um, do some naturalists want to come up and share people that give them courage? Soleil, come on up. I did not let my candle blow out yeah. on the way over here. No worries. You're welcome, Nada. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, some people that give me courage are my camp friends. Whenever I have those butterflies, they always make me feel like I can do anything. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Does anyone else want to share? Hazel? Some people who give me courage right now in this 
uncertain time are people on the front lines working in hospitals and places where um, patients from coronavirus are being treated to um, be cured. Thank you for sharing, Google. Looks like we have some more comments um, and before we have some more naturalists share. Carson says they get cured from God and Sequoia says that their friends did get cured. Awesome. And thanks for sharing. Well, Thank you for sharing. Yeah. It looks like Scale wants Scale? to share his Yay. wisdom courage. Somebody who gives me courage is my older sister. Today is her birthday. She's turning 29. And um, she does a lot of amazing things. And she inspires me a lot. And she makes me happy to live in this world. Thank you for sharing. So, Alpha Red, um, I know that whole night hike thing is kind of new for you. You're not used to being up this late, well past this bedtime. But we wanted to give you the opportunity to think of someone who gives you courage, someone who makes you feel brave, and that you can share with all the students who are watching. And you can even hold my courage candle so you can absorb all of that courage. So but don't set your beard on fire. I was hearing from all the naturalists all the things that give them courage. And uh, now this one person isn't totally alive, but it's this little <laughs> hiking mascot that I, I take everywhere I go with. Gives me courage to go hiking all around to all those beautiful places that I go to. And it hugs me. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Boom. Aww. So it doesn't have to always be a person. It could be like one of your stuffed bears or anything. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Go ahead. Okay. So someone that gives me courage is my niece. She's nine years old. And just like you guys, um, she can't go back to school, but she's being really strong and it's really inspiring to me. And like, I can't imagine not being able to do that. So I really appreciate you guys too. I'm grateful for you and tuning in and just being here and watching us and learning. So it's really amazing. So Tolo, I think we have a special way to commemorate these, pe these special people in our lives that give us courage. Mm -hmm. So why, why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. So a really cool way to tell people that you're grateful for, that you're grateful for them, is to write them a letter. And if you can't write them a letter, I know right now you can't really go to the post office, but you can write them an email or you can text them um, and show them that you're grateful for them. And if they're in your home, you can tell them and um, they can show you how to write a letter. So. You can also think about them in your heart um, and keep them yeah. there because, you know, these times it's really important to keep these people that make us feel powerful. And, yeah. So if you want to use this opportunity to grab a pen and paper, we'll give you about 45 seconds to go and get that. Um, and if not, if you don't have that, um, you can also type it on your phone or on a computer um, and find a way to share this, something that you love with these people that make you feel courageous. But if you're not, you can look at my courage candle as it's burning. And it, now it doesn't have just my courage and all the courage from before, but it has all of the courage that you guys have shared with us tonight, both the naturalists and those of you watching at home. Love to hear a story from There's a, a new parent of a past outdoor ed student who has a really sweet comment. Um, all of you gave our daughter Ava courage and confidence when she did the night hike at outdoor ed last December. She had been dreading that part of outdoor ed but was proud that she did it, so thank you. Aww. 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 That's we, cool. we really appreciate hearing that story um, and we hope that you can. Just like um, this student says that we gave her courage, we hope that you can take courage from this um, event and this sharing um, in the coming days. Take it away, Tola. I'll hold those. Cool. So, when you start a letter, sometimes it can be really hard to 
not know where to start. So, I usually get a blank piece of paper and I write. I start it off, depending on who I'm writing to, like if this is a professional letter to like my mom or dad or any family member, I can just say dear and maybe I'll, I'll use a darker color so you can see it. Dear. And then you can write their name. I'm just gonna write name for now, but you can put whoever's name that you are writing. And you can include anything. Like I usually like writing in the things I've done the past since the last time I saw them. But this time, I want to write I am grateful to have you in my life. Little exclamation point. And thank you for being so brave. And you can keep adding more. I like even drawing some stuff in there. You can even draw a little heart or whatever you want to draw. And then you end with since Oh, I spelled it wrong. Sincerely. Or with love or however you want to end it. And then you sign it off. Cello. And then you can fold it. Hopefully it'll fit in your envelope. And some of our naturalists are also writing some letters um, to the people they are grateful for. And you can put it. Yep. And you can put it in an envelope, or if you're, you can even write it the same way if you're writing a text or an email. And right now, we don't really want to be licking things because, yeah, but you can get a uh, wet, damp towel and dab it onto the little sticky side of the envelope, and you just close it and it'll stick. And the way I remember um, how to at write or address a letter is on the right side here, I mean left side, sorry, camera, um, you're going to write your name so on the right. And then you can just put it in the post office, but like I said, if you don't have um, envelope and paper, you can always just write an email or send the person that you're grateful for a text, or even just tell them um, if they're in your home. So we'll give you um, another minute to keep working on these letters and you can always finish them after this live stream or you can always write more than one. Um, I know that I have a lot of people in my life who give me courage, um, who make me feel brave and that I'm really, really grateful for. Um, and it's really nice to always hear the appreciation. Um, so you can always use this skill and you can use it on however many people you want. Um, we also want to give a shout out to George Trubeau from Burrell Middle School. Um, that come with sixth graders because he is a teacher that makes those courage candles that are so special and that are used by naturalists that have been used by naturalists for so long. Um, so we'll give you another like 15 seconds to keep working on these letters and if you're not finished you can always come back to it um, after this live stream or tomorrow or any other time you want to. Oh, I we would love to hear um, if you want to share that with us we would love to hear them um, and you can put them in the comments and we can share them with everyone watching because we spread gratefulness and love in the world um, even if it's not to someone that we know directly this is from ash dear golden aka sir mr squishalot i have done today's schoolwork since i met you you were one of my favorite squishalots parentheses stuffy Sincerely, me, Aaron, a.k.a. Ash. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is a beautiful, beautiful letter. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now that we're coming back, focusing, we're going to leave our, our letters behind on the, on the table or wherever you're writing. And we're going to end with this really cool activity that we end our night hikes with. And we usually... Um, and 
our night hike by letting students get prepared and then we come back and tuck our students in, which means you get red books and sometimes you get sung songs and tonight we're gonna read you a book and maybe even a song, you never know. I'm gonna read you a song. I mean <laughs> I'm read you a book. It's called The Napping House. Um, one of our naturalists favorite books, so <laughs> I love that book! <laughs> There is a house, a napping house, where everyone is asleep. And in that house, there is a bed, a cozy bed in a napping house, where everyone is asleep. See, they're asleep. And on that bed, there is a granny, a snoring granny on a cozy bed in a napping house, where everyone is asleep. Whoa, she's so snoring. And on that granny, there is a child, a dreaming child, on a snoring granny, on a cozy bed, in a napping house, where everyone is asleep. And on that child, there is a dog, a dozing dog, on a dreaming child, on a snoring granny, on a cozy bed, in a napping house, where everyone is asleep. And on that dog, there's a cat, a snoozing cat, on a dozy dog, on a dreaming child, on a snoring granny, on a cozy bed, in a napping house where everyone is asleep. And on that cat is a mouse, a slumbering mouse on a snoozing cat, on a dozing dog, on a dreaming child, on a snoring granny, on a cozy bed, in a napping house where everyone is asleep. And on that cat, there is a mouse, a slumbering mouse, and a snoozing cat, and a dozing dog, and a dreaming child, and a snoring granny on a cozy bed, in a napping house where everyone is asleep. And on that mouse, there is a flea. Can it be? A wakeful flea on a slumbering mouse, on a snoozing cat, on a dozing dog, on a dreaming child, on a snoring granny on a cozy bed, in a napping house where everyone is asleep. A wakeful flea who bites the mouse, who scares the cat, who claws the dog, who thumps the child, who bumps the granny. Draw the picture. Yeah. Who breaks the bed. In a napping house where no one is asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank you, um, and you guys are super lucky because not only do you get read a book for Tucky, but you're also going to get sung a song, and Eat Screen Light is going to come back to play. Whoa, it's our fourth Let me go find Eat Screen Light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all star superstar. So now we're going to have some naturals come and join us and sing this song with us. Um, and I'm going to teach it to you so that you can learn this song as well. This is a beautiful song to sing in the evening. It's a real, it always, it's a great lullaby. Um, I know this is a song that a lot of naturalists, including myself, love to sing at Tuck In. And this is a repeat after me song. This, this is, is a repeat, repeat after, after me song. Go out in the rain and listen to the thunder. Go out in the rain and listen to the thunder. Lie down in the grass and watch the clouds roll by. Lie down in the grass and watch the clouds roll by. Reach up to the stars and set your mind to wonder. Reach up to the stars and set your mind to wonder Of all there is to do in life and all there is to try Of all there is to do in life and all there is to try And soon you'll be singing to the moon And soon You'll be singing to the moon. Um, 
and there are some verses in between that we will sing to you, but we will come back to that chorus again and again, and you can always join us with that chorus at home. Um, and if you have any younger siblings or other family members, you can use you can sing this song to them, or you can read them a story um, to help th tuck them into bed. Um, I know it's a super comforting. I hope you feel that it's been comforting for you, and hopefully you can share that with other people. Be there or be square. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. be a triangle. Or be a circle. And at 11 15, you're going to have a special Spanish special with. Sassy Boots! I see Boots! I see Boots! If you want to speak in Spanish or if you don't speak that much Spanish and want to practice with us, it's going to be a bilingual show. Yeah. Woo! 11 15, mañana. tomorrow. Mañana. mañana. And you can always check out our newsletter. Um, and we are, just want to let you know, we're going to close this campfire the same way we closed last night's campfire and the way we will close all campfires this week. 
with that song, We Come From The Water. Um, and we call that zipper song where we replace that one word, the word is water, with other um, words of things. And we think it fits really well because if you listen to the song, it says, go back to this thing and turn the world around. And when we've been talking tonight about gratefulness and people that we're grateful for, that we can take inspiration from to help make the world a better place. Um, so as we start singing, you can submit words for us to fill in there. And remember, slime on! <laughs> All of us, the water, go back to the water and turn the world around. We come from the water, go back to the water and turn the world Go back to the dirt. 